So there's a quote by Voltaire that says, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. And that right there sums up what we're going to be talking about today, all or nothing thinking. But have you ever felt like you're either on top of the world or just failing miserably with no middle ground? That's all or nothing thinking. And it might be holding you back more than you realize. You see, this type of thinking impacts everything, your decisions, your mental health, your personal growth. And most of the time, it slips by you undetected. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what all or nothing thinking is, why it happens, and show you some examples you'll definitely relate to, and most importantly, how to stop it. But first, let's get clear on what it actually is. All or nothing thinking, also known as black and white or polarized thinking, is a cognitive distortion. It's when you view things in extremes, and if you've ever done that, you're either a total success or a complete failure. There's no room for that messy middle ground. And this kind of thinking distorts reality by putting everything into one of two categories, good or bad, perfect or terrible, success or failure. But life isn't that simple, is it, really? It's not. Because most things actually exist on a spectrum. So what causes all or nothing thinking? Well, let's talk about a few factors. One is upbringing. See, many of us grew up in environments where, well, perfection was the standard and mistakes weren't tolerated. And over time, we start thinking that anything less than perfect isn't good enough. Then there's personality traits. Perfectionists, I'm looking at you. You see, the fear of making mistakes makes black and white thinking feel like a shield to a perfectionist. But really, it's a trap. And stress and anxiety make things even worse. When you're overwhelmed, your brain wants to simplify things, so you default to extremes, success or failure, right or wrong. I mean, I can remember when my daughter was just six years old, the stress of doing something wrong would lead her to black and white thinking. I mean, so if she snuck candy before dinner and I caught her and called her out on it, her automatic response would be, I'm a bad, terrible daughter. It would often surprise me why she defaulted to that way of thinking when any punishment was just a lecture on not to do it again. And then there's mental health conditions. For some, mental health issues like anxiety, depression, or OCD can intensify this thinking. Seeing gray areas becomes even harder if you're already battling worry for those rigid thoughts. And interestingly enough, this black and white thinking had a purpose back in the day. You see, when our ancestors faced life or death situations, they had to make those snap judgments. Is it safe or is it dangerous out there? Is this food or am I gonna eat poison? But in today's world, where most of our challenges aren't about survival, this thinking causes that unnecessary stress. So now you have an understanding of black and white thinking or polarized thinking or all or nothing thinking, however you wanna call it. But I'm gonna go ahead and drive that point home even further with some examples from different scenarios. For example, at work. Let's say you miss out on a promotion and suddenly you think, I'm a total failure in my career. I mean, really? One missed opportunity in your entire career is a disaster? Does that thinking sound familiar? I mean, some of us do it. How about this one? You eat one unhealthy meal and your, whole, and your brain goes, well, my whole diet's ruined. I might as well quit. Does that sound familiar? I'll tell you, with me, I've done that plenty of times. I've had one bad meal, one burger, and then I decided, well, we're tossing that out today. That's black and white thinking. Don't do that. Or how about in relationships? Your friend doesn't text you back right away, and you instantly think, they don't care about me. You jump from zero to 100, ignoring all the other possibilities. And there are other possibilities. Or when you're working on self-improvement, if I can't follow my plan perfectly, then I failed. But hey, even small steps count, right? So you can see how black and white thinking is what I like to call a little dramatic. All right, so if you've stuck with me this far, I wanna thank you because right now we're gonna go into the solution, how we stop this all or nothing thinking. First, we wanna practice or we wanna start by challenging your thoughts or you wanna start by challenging your thoughts. Ask yourself, is this really 100% true? Chances are it's not. Look for the middle ground instead of saying I failed, try, I didn't get the results I wanted, but I'm learning. And look for the gray areas. You know, life isn't black and white. Get used to identifying the gray areas in your life. Ask yourself, what's another way to look at this? It's not pass or fail. It's usually somewhere in between. And try switching from either or to both and statements. Like, I didn't get everything done today, 
and I still made progress. It's a simple, but powerful shift, a mindset shift. And then focus on progress, not perfection. Instead of chasing perfection, focus on progress. Celebrate the small wins. Even tiny steps forward are better than standing still. Focus on remember, making mistakes doesn't define you. If you can learn to be a little more compassionate with yourself, you'll reduce the pressure to think in extremes. Okay, so to recap what we've learned, all or nothing thinking, it's just a mental block, but it's not permanent. By challenging those thoughts and practicing seeing the middle ground, you can break free from this pattern. And have you ever caught yourself thinking in black and white terms? You know, if you've done so, drop an example in the comments below and let's talk about how to see it in a more balanced way. And if you found this helpful, this video, make sure to hit subscribe for more tips on mastering your mindset. And as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate you.